Yeah. Okay, so everyone have their, their book out to page 189 if if you have it. If you don't, it's fine. Should I bring the book in the kitchen? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> We kind of represent sound waves as this picture, even though I've already said that sound doesn't move like that. Sound travels as a longitudinal wave, but we kind of draw it like that just for an easier visualization. So what, what are we graphing? So we're graphing the pressure because the sound wave has a series of compressions and rarefactions. So as we go up, obviously it's a compression. As we go down, it's obviously a rarefaction. The reason why we want, want to draw it like this is because we can get many terms out of many variables out of this thing. We can get wavelength, for example, which we will come to that. We can get amplitude, which is how loud the wave is. Well, actually how big the wave is, but in, in terms of sound, how loud the wave is. And from these two, you can derive other variables like frequency, like period, and things like that, which we will all get to. The velocity of a wave as it propagates, as it travels, in this case I'm going to say the wave is traveling that way, right? The velocity of a wave as it travels is governed by the frequency multiplied by the period, multiplied by the wavelength, sorry. And um, we're not going to go through any derivation of how this thing came about because we can't assume that everyone has done math specialist. So we're just gonna kind of, we're just gonna kind of tell you like all right this is the formula, and just kind of remember it. It's gonna be on your formula sheet. It's gonna be on the formula sheet, right? It's it's gonna be on the formula sheet anyway. <coughs> what? She's like all the time. And um, <laughs> wait, can I get a show of hands? Who does math specialist here? All Perhaps right. she could derive it just That's as an correct. example. Yeah. yeah. So okay, so for all those who didn't do men's specialist, this this is probably gonna bore you to death, but I'm sorry. Yeah, but equally, if it's something you see and you go on to do anything that, that's physics related, you'll know where it comes from. Okay, the reason why I'm gonna to have to derive this for the men's specialist too is because they're probably gonna go into things like physics engineering or other so-called hardcore subjects. So. My Y is going to be the height of the... Okay, this is just for the three math specialist students, all right? Four. Y yes, I'm being, I'm, I'm being a bit exclusive here. <laughs> just to be a good thing to see. Oh, sorry. Four. I didn't see. Um, we're going to let Y be the height of the wave. So as the wave moves, we have two variables that govern 
this function, we call it multivariable function. We have the position along the x-axis governing the height of the wave because if I was here, the wave is here. If I was here, the wave is here. And we also have the time that governs the speed of the wave. It governs the height of the wave. So, I can't really draw time, can I? No. <laughs> so I'm going to... If we take one snapshot of the wave at time t1, and we take another snapshot of the wave at time t2, we're going to get... And the lambdas will be the same, right? The wave, length, the wave is just moved just a little bit. So the wavelength is still the same, right? So that means this in the bracket has not changed. It's just a constant. So kx minus omega t is just a constant. I'm going to call it c as a constant. I want this. It is because this argument in the bracket is governing the, the wave as it moves, in this case, to the right. Let's differentiate all of that with respect to time. Would anyone know how to do this? Any of the math specialist students? <laughs> Anyone differentiating with respect to t? Which terms have t in it? Show them. Okay, we're diff let's just differentiate this one, alright? We are differentiating a k, which is a constant. <coughs> And we're differentiating an x, which is respect to t, so we're going to get a dx dt minus omega is also a constant. And if we differentiate t with respect to t, what do we get? Anyone? Okay, we're just going to get 1. And if we differentiate a constant with respect to any variable, what do we get? Zero. Sorry, what did you say? Zero. 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 <laughs> so let's just rearrange this equation. Now, I haven't told you anything about these variables, omega and k, but if you read, if you, but omega and k also equal to f and lambda. dx dt is this velocity, right? Mm -hmm. Or you match 3 c 3 d and special students have learned rectilinear motion, right? Mm -hmm. If you haven't, dx dt, which is velocity, change in position, x, over a change in time, distance divided by time. Mm -hmm. Does that look roughly familiar to anyone? Which one? From year 11 <laughs> physics. Yeah. Isn't that velocity? Yeah, yeah. it's just velocity. Yep. Yeah. Oh. That <laughs> V equals F lambda is just this. That's where, the, that's where the formula comes from. So yeah, it's a pretty long window way of explaining things, but kind of have to derive it because of the couple of math specialist students that we have here. Thank <laughs> you.